Nata nggo lisal wong kelal kaya mai wita kira-kira. Saya bagi 50 kepah. Na roka ni nunggu ngoli na ko roa tama na siwa vata ke na nunu. Na roka ni ndutu buli na ngone roa tama na Mainan nunu kena siwa. Terawat di Sarawali pun na rawa kaya nunggu kumpul apa bual. Yang tutun berbur ni bula. Yang kau rayat nang tu nak kau kau sen tu nang tu nunggu keliru ramai. Sakila sarang go nai labu tu nai labu nak kucan rawat ina ina ikan go. Fish are a big part of our lives here in the Pacific. For generations, they have sustained our families, our communities, and our livelihoods. Lisala Wangalala and many others like him who make their living off the sea know their fishing grounds better than anyone, including all the best ways and places to catch kawakawa and donu, commonly called grouper in English. But these days, he says, our need for cash is fast outgrowing the supply of fish. Kita <laughs> Belanin dah kau, salal. Ya, aw 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 bina kat me retor me kumbung. Tular rayat kau pandi dina tar terang. Indu cuma ni kena kau kau. All around Fiji, similar stories are being told about the rapidly declining numbers and sizes of kawakawa and donu. Anak kami mesti tahu tak kembali mana lesi orang kau kawa. Pati ni kau kau ni ngono sangat mesati kebu, mungkin nak pun ada salah lama ya, saya ngah. Yo birangan ini dalam ni batu, cendal ini punga salah kau ngamena kau kawa. Pokok apa kau ikar orang ni siwat ya? Tolak mata ngatoli apa itu mentang kau kau tolis tali balik merani tanggung sunai kau, bisa pasti ngalih. Oh ya, kau ni pun kau kau lor ni siwat sertung apa anggo? Kau mentang nasi orang nak kau kawa, kau nak kau kau lala ini batu eh? Kau ni pas sertung anggo siapa anggo? Yang ngono siang anggo siu sar pasar anggo so sar pasar anggo. Andrei Andrei Sarangga, gua mantang kan, gua tulis siwang nunggu, nunggu pasti kena gua. In 1972, I start my own fishing as a commercial fisherman. At that time, every type of fish, no matter where you drop your anchor, you get the fish. It was enough to survive because plenty fish. We don't have to stay out in the sea as we are staying today, ten days, fifteen days. Just have to go to two days or three days, come back with a ton of fish. Today you stay 15 days, you come back with 30, 40 kilo fish. I have fish all over these places, especially even here, this place too, and even this place, all. This is where Lambasa is somewhere here. Before we used to fish all these areas now. Now we have to go down and fish up to here. This is bottle. They buy dirty. It's getting less and lesser. How will you survive for the future generation? Nengolengolwe, nengolengolwe ya sao, se nengolengolwe ya tui sao, se nengolengolwe le bi bi tini kuwa. Parang olandra pa siyudo ko na wong kuwa na na bi ta ta ka ukidig ka tawo na kasal. 
Iya, orang ada pas juga. Jadi saya mesti ke puna Rio, na ya kau we. Jadi kamu lebu kena puna kata uli lagi nih mat kena patar untuk kena nanti ni apa terikat sal. Juga kau we salah kena saat ambek ni atau juga kena kau kata itu memat. Barra juga saya tutu ya tni juga kau kau kita lebet nak sal lebih dah tak kau. Kawakawa and Donu are so vulnerable to overfishing because of how they breed. Few fish breed so predictably, in the same places, at the same times, in such large numbers. Following the moon cycles, at a healthy breeding site, hundreds if not thousands of fish would gather and release their eggs. But these gatherings put them at great risk to overfishing as too few fish are left to breed and restock the reefs. In 2003, 22 breeding sites were identified and surveyed in Fiji's waters. 18% of the breeding sites in Fiji for Kawakawa were found to be dead, meaning fish no longer successfully breed there. 73% of the breeding sites were found to be at risk of dying out soon if we don't act now, and sadly, just 9% of the country's sites were found to be healthy. That was 2003, and fishing pressure has only increased in Fiji since then. 70 to 80% of the population directly rely on uh, coastal uh, fisheries or inshore fisheries uh, for food uh, resource. We used to uh, just rely on, uh, on subsistence uh, fisheries uh, maybe before the advent of uh, the market economy from the 1940s, 1950s and 1960s. Now people are going out to fish uh, the reefs that uh, were not accessible uh, before. Our population too is increasing and we know that we are not uh, giving these stocks time to recover. If I can give an example, is uh, this uh, groupers and uh, coral trout, uh, kawakawa and don. The decline of our kawakawa and donu stocks is a big problem that casts a wide net, impacting our lives and also our culture. Traditionally in Fiji, when there is a gathering of the, like for the Great Council of Chiefs or a, a chiefly um, traditional gathering where Maluata is concerned, we take total. That has been there for ages. So now that the, the, the idea, the banning of the turtle, the control of the turtle, uh, turtle trade is going on, fish, kawakawa and uh, donu is the next one that they, you know, they use it as sebu or, or for special occasions. Away from remote coastal villages, People living in Fiji's towns and cities are always on the lookout for a good catch. But even here, there are signs that we are losing our fish. See, we used to have a fish shop not too long ago, and we had to close it down because we weren't getting consistent quality fish. And when I mean quality, I mean we've got high standards at New World IGA. So we thrive for standards, so we weren't getting consistent quality, so we had to close it down. That itself is a concern, that a large retail chain can't get, get hold of fish to, um, to meet the demand for Fiji. Water, water everywhere, as they say, no fish to see, and that's what it is here. But there's some good news. While knowing when these fish breed makes them extremely vulnerable to overfishing, it also makes them easier to help. If we simply avoid catching them, eating them and selling them during their peak breeding months, we can help ensure they breed each year and restock our reefs. And thanks to research by the Ministry of Fisheries, we know exactly when to give them a break. June through September are the peak months for these fish to breed. That's why in 2014, the 4FJ campaign was launched. It makes helping these fish recover as easy as one, two, three. Just ask Jerry Tuwai, one of the growing numbers of 4FJ champions.
The campaign was developed by Sea Change, a regional communications NGO based in Fiji. We worked with fisheries and other key partners to develop a campaign that would help build wide public support for reviving this fish. We knew something had to change or we would lose this fish. But we also knew that people are already getting overwhelmed with environmental campaigns, with so much uh, scientific information that people were tuning out. Then we made sure we gave people something they could do right here, right now, to make a difference. If you want to help, just take the 4FG pledge not to eat them for the four months. Just give them a chance to breed and we all get more later. And it worked better than what we anticipated. With just a few part-time campaign staff and the help of volunteers, the 4FJ campaign reached out through our annual festivals in Suva, Nandi, Lotoka and Lombasa. And it reached out through the media and through presentations to communities and corporations. Anywhere someone would listen, the campaign went. So we shared the stories of people of Fiji uh, through our champions from all walks of life, including some very prominent Fijians. <laughs> so each champion told us why it mattered and why we needed to take action. Bulabinaka, I am a survivor of Garani village in Ngao. Kakao and Dono are rapidly declining across Fiji. I want to let them breed and restock our reefs so we can eat more of them the rest of the year because I don't want to be remembered as the generation that paid it off. Nisambula, I'm Shami Lochen, the FBC manager of radio programs. I pledge not to eat Kawakawa or Donu during their peak spawning months because what will happen to us if our fish run out? Nisambula, I'm Ben Ryan, coach of the National Sevens rugby team. I want to let them breed and restock Fiji's reefs because I want to help ensure the people of Fiji thrive today and tomorrow. Nisambula, I am Reverend Dr. Epineri Wakandiobosa, General Secretary of the Methodist Church in Fiji. We wanted to let them breed and restock our reefs so we can eat more of them the rest of the year because the Bible calls on us to be responsible stewards of all the beautiful things God created. The campaign also inspired local music legend Makare to write a theme song called Our Way of Life that captured the spirit of the campaign. Since the 4FJ campaign launched, more than 15,000 people have stepped up to take the pledge at pledge drives held across the country. These people then help spread the word to their families and their networks. Wherever the campaign went, most people wanted to take action as soon as they heard the 4FJ story. Personally, I love eating fish, but this is a particular breed of fish, eh? and I would want the next generations to also at least have some in the environment eh? for them to also enjoy and uh, appreciate. If we tend to abuse the resources in our environment, such as these fish, then it's going to go extinct. That's what I'm personally worried about. I have to uh, spread this message as well. As a teacher, I would want to tell my students as well about the importance of this. This is not only a campaign. Eh? What we want to do is take it to another level, incorporate it with some of our theological interpretation maybe in our schools, eh, our theological schools. As we talk about the Creator uh, in the Hebrews, it's called Elohim. Out of nothing he created. Uh, from nothing it came to be. And then gave that power to humanity and he said go and dominate, have power over the earth. It does not mean to abuse. Domination means to be good steward. Domination means um, to, to look after in, in the concept, to have, to be the, the steward, not only that, but to be the protector of nature. 
We took the players three, four years ago to not sell Donu and Kawakawa during the spawning season. To be honest, initially we took a whipslash um, because people like, why not, why not? Because I guess we started off first and we felt that we had to play a role in the community to make a difference. We do hope that the other retail chains set the ground rules for the entire nation. We humbly hope that they follow suit as well. Visala Wangalala was one of the first fishermen to take the pledge and become a 4FJ champion. His story demonstrates the power of the campaign. Lisala attended the launch of the 4FJ website in Suva in 2014 and left inspired. Then he started to talk to his friends and family about making a change and in turn inspired a village. The evidence is clear. More and more people are understanding the issue, and once they do, they want to do something about it. But is it enough? There's an amazing amount of awareness now, largely through the Four Fiji campaign. So an awareness and appreciation that something needs to be done. Let's take a scenario where we lose Kawakawa because they are the most vulnerable of the reef fishers. What's going to happen? The next group of fish that are available will go down. The snappers, the sambutu, the emperors, those types of things will be the next ones to disappear. So the groupers are really an indication. We can't manage the groupers. We're going to have problems with reef fishers in general. and struggle to maintain healthy fisheries. So that's why it's important to be making decisions as a country, as a nation, about where do people want these fish to be used? Who should be getting the benefits of the fish and the value, the fabulous value that these fish actually have, the economic value. It's getting to that next step of how that can actually be done. And why I'm particularly worried is because I think there's a real urgency. In June 2017, while co-presiding over the United Nations Oceans Conference in New York, Fiji made 17 voluntary commitments to save and protect its ocean and marine resources. On the global stage, Fiji made a statement about doing what's necessary to sustainably manage its marine resources and encouraged other countries to follow. Among these was the call for sustainable management of Kawakawa and Donu, and a key measure to do that would be making the 4FJ pledge a legal ban. Fiji pledged to stop the fishing and sale of Kawakawa and Donu during its peak breeding months starting in 2018. The 14th voluntary commitment seeks the sustainable management of groupers. We call it in Fijian Kawakawa to ensure that this vulnerable fish species continue to provide substantial benefit to coastal communities in Fiji. The Ministry of Fisheries with its partners have committed to ensuring that sustainable management of groupers, including the use of seasonal closure of critical spawning sites with the prohibition of fishing and sales of these species of fish during the spawning season. On 6th June 2018, the Ministry of Fisheries issued a public notice banning the fishing, sale and export of all species of grouper, kawakawa and coral trout donu from June through September. Any person or business found in breach of the four-month ban will have their fish confiscated and could receive high fines. For individuals, an instant fine of $10,000 with a potential of up to $50,000 in fines. For corporations, an instant fine of $20,000 with a potential of up to $100,000 in fines. With the seasonal ban in place and as the fish stocks start to recover, the government also wants to take measures to improve the amount of money fishermen earn from this prized resource. 
it's clear that uh, the fisherman is uh, getting very little compared to the middleman and the exporter. The average price per kg for Ndono and Kaukau uh, is around $9 a kg, while uh, the middleman uh, can be selling it uh, from around $16 a kg. And if they export it overseas, they'll get about $25 a kg. We are working with the communities and um, our other partners, the non-government organizations, to try to work out on a better pricing uh, structure so that uh, they get a better uh, value of our fishermen uh, rather than um, the, uh, uh, getting the least um, uh, out of uh, their hard work. For now, Fiji needs to revive these fish, and that means letting them breed. Usually, it's during uh, this uh, breeding season that the harvest and the sales and the export goes uh, sky high, yes. And there are many who are ready to step up to make sure this ban works. The town councils oversee all the fish markets in Fiji and have all pledged to help fisheries enforce the ban. For Nosori Town Council, we were one of the first uh, councils to take the pledge. We felt that it was critical, it was important that we should take the pledge and support the whole program to ensure that we replenish our fisheries resources. And Nosori Market is a centre that deals with the four provinces like Rewa, Tailewu, Natasiri and Lamaiviti. So you would ex we would expect a lot of people dealing with uh, fish. Uh, and fisheries industry is also very dependent in this particular location. Together with these uh, uh, fisheries, we have put in posters to ensure that people are educated, people get that message and information, uh, and that we be, will be able to develop this program further. Uh, the Sultan Council will always be there to ensure that we follow these uh, regulations in, our, in terms of uh, uh, banning the um, catching of uh, kaukawa during this period here. Yeah. We will work together with fisheries to ensure that uh, this whole program is actually enforced here. Yeah. The town councils are not the only ones stepping up to stop the harvesting, sale and export of these fish during their peak breeding months. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service is on board to stop export and the Fiji Police Force are ready to do their part through their community posts. If we continue to go down this line and have depleted resources, it will put a strain on our enforcement and trying to maintain law and order. Uh, specifically when it's food security that we are talking about. And uh, that is why this campaign is very critical for us to be on board and uh, for us to take the lead role in uh, developing uh, uh, intervention programs as far as communities is concerned. Because once we satisfy this and address these needs, uh, the factors or the, uh, the issue crime itself will then be uh, addressed. This... Uh it's a bold uh, step, but it's uh, perhaps the only way out uh, for us at this point in time. Culturally and, uh, in, and uh, traditionally, working together, what we call uh, sole sole back, always uh, works for us because everybody is there and we put all our minds and our hands and uh, even our shoulder in uh, supporting uh, what is there. Government uh, cannot uh, do it alone. Ministry of Fisheries cannot do it alone. The communities cannot do it on their own. If we can do this, we could easily allow let the cow-cow and donor stock recover within the next three to five years. One of my dream was to ensure that I bring those glory days back. The days that uh, we were abundant in resources, there were a lot of fish there and there were a lot of food around and you know, people had good houses, there were no too much um, issues, social issues out there. So we can say, okay, we can say, 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 we but I believe that it is part of every human being's calling. 
her purpose is to live, not only live, but look after the things that we live with, and that is nature. Kerani kuni ovi tau ndunduanga, kerani ndau nguli tau doko, viran tau shiwa tau doko. Kerani kuni ali nai kungo virana vita mata mata tolu, vane vita mata mata muri, makumungu, virutuna lubena, tarabere vita mata mata muri, makuni ali virana nai kungo.